Hey, Barbie. Can I come to your house tonight? Sure. I don't have anything big planned, just a giant blowout party with all the Barbies and plant choreography and a bespoke song. You should stop by. So cool. Hey guys, thanks for tuning in and hanging out with me again on Broken Dolly TV. My name's Gypsy, and today we're going to talk about my thoughts on the upcoming Barbie movie that is about to hit the theaters real soon. Of course, being a Barbie enthusiast, I'm going to have an opinion about this movie. First, let me just say this. I have a little bit of housekeeping stuff that I want to get into, but I'm not going to talk about that until the end of this video. So if you're curious about that, then stick around to the end to hear what's going on on my channel. And also, just a little little disclaimer my opinions are just my own they're based on my own life experiences my beliefs and my way of looking at the world and it may not be a, a popular opinion but th it's my opinion if you don't agree with anything i'm saying i'm not saying these things to offend anybody it's like it's just my opinion so if you feel differently tell me about it in the comment section and i want us to have a safe space where we can have these discussions and talk about the things that pertain to us in this community in an open way right that's what this channel is all about so anyway throughout the video you might see a, a little bit of footage of me creating characters in my sims 4 game that correspond with actual existing barbie dolls in my personal collection so if you happen to spot some of those characters you know so if you're like is that is that Fremont? yeah it is anyway let's get into this the first thing i gotta say about this is that I'm, I'm having mixed feelings about this this uh, movie. I don't really know what to think until after I see the movie, of course. And kind of the same thing about The Little Mermaid. You guys heard my take on that. So I still haven't seen Little Mermaid. I am planning to at some point. As far as whether or not I want to see this movie in theaters, I'm going to be honest. When I saw the trailer for the movie, I was very excited. And I really was contemplating whether or not I want to see it in the movies, right? So, but here's my thing. I have this thing where, like, I'm not going to watch a movie at the theaters if it's not something I'm feeling very passionate about because uh, the movies cost a lot of money and I feel like you got to earn that from me, right? I don't have to leave my house and come spend all this money to come see your movie inside of a theater when I can just be at home and stream it on my laptop or the comfort of my living room with my kids like i would you know what i'm saying so i'm very picky about which movies i'll go and see at the theaters because i'm trying to make a memory of it right that's kind of how i feel right now like trying to figure out is this worth going to see at the movies or do i want to just wait until it comes out and then watch it stream it from home so in order to make this decision i had to do a little bit of research and that's what i've been doing so i've been just looking into different takes on what people have been saying about this movie even listening to people who have already gone and seen the movie when they did like the premieres or whatever they call it you know early access to certain movies um i kind of wanted to hear what they had to say about it and keep in mind that a lot of the people who are watching this movie aren't necessarily enthusiasts of barbie the brand itself so you know, I have to kind of like take it with a grain of salt how people are perceiving the movie, right? Here are the things that appeal to me about the movie. I'm very excited about the actors, for one. I feel like they did a really good job casting the movie and the people who are playing the parts are living up to our fantasy idea of what those characters are supposed to be like if they were in real life. So that part, I think they figured that out great job i'm also very impressed by the aesthetic of the movie like the way everything looks the set design um obviously mattel is working directly with the creators of the movie so i i can see why they would make sure to get all of that stuff accurate you know it could have went in a different direction so i'm glad to see that the aesthetic of the movie does fit in with what genuinely reflects barbie the brand right barbie the toy oh and another thing that really appeals to me is the musical aspect of it because i myself am a musician i myself am trained in like broadway and theater musicals and stuff like that so it excites me when a great musical is out there because i want to be a part of that experience i love musicals i love plays i love things like that so if it's something that's going to give me that experience then i'm looking forward to it right now at the same time there's a lot of things that concern me about this movie which you can't tell from looking at the trailer and that's the part that i'm concerned about the underlying messages in the storyline it's so weird you guys i hear some people saying that it's too feminist but then i hear people saying that it's not feminist enough and i feel like the people who say it's not feminist enough are you mostly women that are saying this 
<laughs> Lord, here we go. So here we go with the unpopular part of my opinion, okay? For some reference, understand that I am a 38-year-old black and Korean woman who was born a woman who identifies as a woman whose pronouns are she and her and very very confident and assured in my identity as a female all right not only that i am married and i have children and i am the mom of a boy and a girl also i was raised by mostly by two parents but my father died when i was nine years old so i do have the experience of having a man in the household being raised with you know a man up until the age of nine but then after that i also have the experience of being raised by a single mother all right now i've said i'm saying all of this to be very transparent in part of where my uh ideals are coming from based on the way that i grew up the way that i've been experiencing life as a minority woman who's married with kids but also keep in mind that i'm also a former single mother so there's many different layers and um experiences that i'm looking at this whole situation from okay something that really concerns me about today's media is how wokey woke everything is and how very aggressive the messaging is towards children specifically and women specifically on feminist ideals and the whole LGBTQ plus like agenda, it's very concerning to me. And that's not because I'm anti-feminism or because I'm anti-LGBTQ. I'm not. I'm very embracing and open of everybody, all right? Oh, another thing I should add in here also is that I do have a religion. I follow a religion and I don't call myself a religious person because I don't do everything I'm supposed to do in my religion to reflect my religion like I have so much work to do I do have ideals that are based in religion right so but anyway so I'm just saying that so that I'm being completely completely transparent so you know where I'm coming from I'm very concerned about how things are being depicted in the media as far as the norms that society is trying to place on children and women in general and this is the thing that really concerns me I like the Barbie brand in general because Barbie as a character lines more with the original concept of feminism like today's feminism to me is not true feminism this is just we're calling it feminism but really it's just anti-masculinity that's how I'm looking at it that's how it feels that's how it comes off it's very whatever the opposite of misogyny is like that's what it is to me that's how I feel when I'm around people who have this rhetoric it's very aggressive it's It's very angry. It's very insulting to men. And I don't understand why we're doing this because we as females need men. Society needs men. We need men. Men do the hard work that we don't want to do. It's not that we can't do it. Yeah, you can do it. I can go be a plumber. I don't want to be a plumber. (laughs) I can't think of five women in my life that want to go be plumbers. I can't think of two women in my life who want to go and be plumbers. I don't know any women, honestly, who want to go be plumbers. Filming, construction work, jumping on top of high rises, working with electrical lines. These are the kinds of jobs that mostly men voluntarily go after to do. Are they high paying jobs? Perhaps. But if you pay me a million dollars an hour, I still wouldn't go be a plumber. I wouldn't be a construction worker. I just don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. And most women that I know, they're not going out of their way to go sweat to death to earn a paycheck most of us don't want to do that we want to work behind a desk work with our brains work with our minds that's usually what we want to do as women to earn money all right so that being said drilling this idea into the thought processes of children and females that we don't need men men are useless and that there's no place in them in our society to me seems very derogatory very insulting very bigoted and that's very dangerous for society for us to be split in that manner society cannot exist properly without men and women contributing to each other's lives and cooperating with one another in order to create something special that everyone can benefit from that's where the family unit comes in right so 
because you're pro-family or pro-males and females getting along or pro-men even doesn't mean that you're anti-woman. It doesn't mean you're anti-gay. It doesn't mean that you're anti-gender identity issues. That's not what that means. But for some reason, we just put it all, we roll it all into one. If you don't agree with this, then that means you think that. If you don't agree with this, then that means you're against me, which is complete nonsense. It's so divisive and it's dangerous and I don't like that so I don't know if this movie is depicting on the surface Barbie one way but then the underlying message is something different than what we're seeing in the trailers because I'm starting to think that perhaps that may be the case I really wish and hope that it isn't but I don't know for sure because when I'm listening to some of the takes of people who have actually watched the movie I'm very concerned I even saw an article that was written by a woman who went to go see the movie with her 20 year old daughter and she didn't have good things to say about it. She felt like it was very anti-male. She felt like all of the male characters were being depicted as bigots or useless, worthless characters. And I can understand as a mom how that could be very, very disheartening to see because I don't want my son to grow up in a world where after all of the work I done put into him, all of the morals I done taught him, all of the responsibility I done instilled in him for him to grow up in a society where once he becomes an adult man and he's trying to actually apply the things he's been learning as a child all these women that he's running into just being dismissive of him because he's a man isn't that what we women who started with the whole feminism movement were trying to fight against because there were men that were totally dismissing us just because we were women and not based on anything to do with our personalities right that's what feminism was fighting against in the first place so that we could be treated as equals but it's like now we've turned the tables in society and made it the norm to aggressively attack males as if something is wrong with you just because you're born a man and we're doing to the men the exact same thing that we said was unfair for them to do to us how does that make anything right you don't make a wrong right by being wrong yourself you know I don't like the double standards and again I'm saying this from the standpoint of a woman don't think because I'm a woman I'm saying just what I think a guy wants to hear because that's not how I operate you know I'm the kind of person who's a critical thinker I want to hear your side his side everybody's side and compare and contrast and see what is in common what everyone is saying that's in common right so I went to a few different sources on YouTube and online where you know articles were written by people who had already seen the movie and just some of the things that I hear it's very like mixed up the rhetoric that it's not feminist enough really scares me because what are these women expecting like what's feminist enough to make you feel comfortable with how a female character is being depicted in a movie is it because she's wearing pink is it because she's got blonde hair like I'm hearing people criticizing um, Barbie's body type and to me that's strange by them saying like it's not realistic for a woman to be depicted like she's so skinny and so perfect and so blunt and I'm like what do you mean it's not realistic there are actual real women that are walking around on the streets every single day who look like like Margot Robbie <laughs> I see them all the time she is a representation of the all-american white woman right Caucasian young women look like that they're skinny they are very light-skinned and they are pretty feminine looking they walk around wearing tight clothes and I mean go on TikTok how do these young girls look a lot of them look like a Barbie doll is that because they're trying to look like Barbie or is that because that's just their natural physique and they're in their youth when I was in my early 20s someone might have said my body type looked unrealistic because I was too skinny but I mean now at 40 I would love to have that body type again but I don't but that's what I'm saying it's like but yeah at 40 years old you might resent that when you see women walk around looking like that because you know how much hard work it is to keep your physique up to continue to look that way so for you that's unrealistic at 40 years old but for a 20 year old that's not an unrealistic body type you see what I'm saying so it really depends on like who are you talking about who are you talking on behalf of right that would be like me saying well my hair is not long and straight and blonde so that means it's not a realistic hairstyle that she's got says who there's so many women who do have long straight blonde hair that would say that's very realistic depiction of women because I look like that naturally right so it really depends on like who you're talking to but anyways there's so many women out here who think that a woman looking like a woman 
is somehow portraying women in a negative way. I don't see how that's so. The average woman that I run into on a daily basis, not online, I mean in my real life, Four out of five women that I know in my real life are very concerned about how they look, wearing makeup, dressing nicely, looking and being feminine and being perceived as a feminine being. If you don't believe me, then again, let's talk to our trans friends. Why do trans people who are transitioning from male to female, I'm just using this as an example, okay? Why do so many of them, when they're transitioning, why don't they just stay looking like a masculine person and then just walk around saying, well, I'm a girl, so just treat me like a girl. Most of them don't do that. Most of them change their appearance that they naturally were born with, at least on the outside, even if they can't do anything about their actual, like, you know, their sexual organs, they still on the outside present like what we consider feminine beings. They'll grow their hair out long or wear a wig. They'll wear makeup. They'll, you know, do something with their um, clothes to make it seem like they have breasts or even go and get surgery to, to actually have breasts. They'll do all kinds of augmenting and changing their natural looks so that they can look more like Barbie, right? So you can't say that what I'm saying doesn't make sense. No, it's very true that when women are transitioning into a man, most of them switch how they look from their feminine appearance to a more masculine looking appearance, whatever you associate in society with masculinity so that they can be identified as a man. The men do the same thing when they're trying to cross over into female land. They will transition the way that they look on the outside. They'll speak differently, right? So that's the proof to me that there is a difference between a feminine presentation and a masculine presentation. Definitely a difference, okay? The trans community understands how important it is to present yourself a certain way so that you can be identified a certain way and treated a certain way. That's the point I'm trying to make here. As women, we're being told by society through the media, and social media is one of the medias I'm talking about too heavily, that a woman presenting herself like a feminine woman is somehow bad it's somehow toxic it's somehow misogynistic it's so strange to me how come i can give my son hormones at as a teenager to make him look like a girl sound like a girl talk like a girl if he decides he wants to become a girl but a woman an actual born woman who's doing that is getting attacked by other women who are telling her oh you're presenting yourself in some misogynistic way oh you're trying to appeal to men why are you doing that it's so weird to me now if Margot Robbie's character was more masculine looking if she was you know big and bulky and beating everybody up and drop kicking everybody and she cut her hair down short like Doja Cat decided to do I feel like she would be more praised and put on a pedestal by the so-called feminists as some strong representation of a woman okay so that's just my opinion and I think it's very contradictory and strange that, th that this rhetoric exists in our society right now. I think that's really bizarre. If I really am as a woman free to make my own decisions, my body is my own and it's up to me how I want to present, then leave me alone to wear high heels, to wear my tight clothes, to wear my long hair, to wear my makeup, to walk around with a purse. And I don't want to sweat. I don't want to drop kick anyone. I don't want to get in a fight. I don't want to be the hero of this story. I don't want to work to death and make all this money so that I can just be tired all day. I don't want to do that stuff. I want to live in my feminine essence. I want to be a housewife. I want to do laundry. I want to cook. I want to clean my house. I want to be here when my kids get home from school. I want to enjoy my free time with my Barbie dolls. <laughs> I want to do those things because I identify as a feminine being and it's my right as a feminine natural born woman to be a woman. So the media isn't really celebrating women as women. We're celebrating women who act like men and I don't understand why that's just accepted in our society right now. I feel like it's so bizarre and confusing to children who are growing up in a society where everyone's questioning their identity it's like you're not allowed to have your own identity anymore if you say i'm this you have to explain yourself to everyone if it doesn't fit whatever the so-called abnormal identity marginalized identity groups if you don't if you don't identify with one of those groups and like show it on the outside people will question you to death because you walk around think act talk like a masculine male but you were born a man like it's so weird to me right so that's the thing that I'm very the most concerned about when it comes to this movie like are they tricking us into watching this movie because this is what I got when I watched the trailer in the trailer the movie comes off like it's a very quirky fun adventurous ride that you're going on in this goofy world that's not based in anything to do with reality 
Barbie is just in Barbie land with her friends and all their little shenanigans and you know they're depicting Ken at least in the trailer like I said the way we Barbie collectors know that Ken has always been kind of like we have our little cheeky like you know depiction of Ken as like he's like secretly gay or like secretly bisexual and he's basically like Barbie simp right he's just all up Barbie's behind and like she runs him okay that's our like big inside joke within the barbie collecting community that that's the persona of ken and barbie right but it's all in good fun it's not because ken is beneath her it's not because he's not good enough it's not because we hate ken we love ken he's just kind of a little bit of a, a, a male dit if you want to call it that right and that's what we expect from ken's character because he's always been depicted that way but at the same time he's very supportive of of barbie he's there for barbie Barbie herself likes Ken. She's not like walking all over Ken and dissing him and calling him stupid and doing all of this stuff. I can be better than you. It's That's not the attitude of the Barbie franchise towards Ken when it comes to Barbie and Ken. I miss that. If that was ever the depiction that Mattel has been putting out there as far as Barbie and Ken's um, relationship. I mean, correct me, you guys. Correct me if I'm wrong. Am I wrong? Have we been depicting Ken this way? Like he's beneath Barbie and he ain't about nothing? Or is he just this goofy, quirky, fun, unusual? You know, he's a little bit of an airhead, but he's got good intentions, right? So that's always the way that I perceived Barbie and Ken. And I thought when I was watching the trailers that that's kind of the storyline they were going to go with and express in good fun. I'm very disappointed at the prospect that this movie might be just filled with a bunch of social political propaganda that's being disguised inside of this world of adventure and fun and kind of just tricking a lot of young people to go and watch this movie where they're drilling into your head that your identity is so precious so important be who you are but at the same time if you are a woman who's feminine something's wrong with you if you are a man who's masculine something is wrong with you it, that's very strange and concerning to me. The majority of society here in America and all around the world, the majority average person is not having a gender identity crisis. The majority of the average people are not having some kind of a feminism crisis. They're not having some kind of a misogyny crisis. They're not going through that. The average human being in this country isn't going through that you guys there's a minority of people that are having that experience and some of those people i really feel like they they're bringing it on themselves like nobody's even bothering them but they'll just wake up one morning and decide they need to announce to everyone whatever they're confused about in life and so they do and then when people aren't running to their aid to tell them how brave and, and they are and support every little thing they're doing if they're not liking all their strange posts on online that is like too much information i didn't ask you for then you're a racist you're sexist you're misogynistic you're homophobic you're something right as we live in an online snowflake culture right now people get offended by the slightest of things they'll take offense to literally any and everything they'll call everything racist like it's unbelievable and crazy how sensitive everybody is over nothing. I really don't even think these people really feel the way that they feel. I think they just like throwing temper tantrums and flipping out on a bunch of strangers online because it makes them feel big or something. And that's mainly what it is. I don't even think these people have the level of crises that they're claiming that they're going through because it's just too much. Like, it's unbelievable. Do you know what I'm saying? And it's unbelievable because the average person really could care less. I don't care about your politics. I don't care about your gender identity issues. I don't care about your dating life. I don't care about what race you are. Like, I really could give a damn. I don't care. As long as you're not bothering me, as long as you're not infringing on my rights, as long as you're not violating my rights, I honestly don't care. And I'm not saying I don't care like, oh, I wish you would go die, like in that kind of like a mean way. I'm saying... It's just, I don't care either way. Whether you do or you don't, good for you. I hope you're happy. That's it. That's how most average people in day-to-day -day life feel about things. You feel me? <laughs> people ain't going out of their way to dish you because you're a man in a dress or a woman with a buzz cut or um, you're a mixed person or because you're dating outside your race. Like in average everyday life, nobody cares. Just don't bother me. But online, 
different story. All the people who love drama like to live online and feed the internet with all of their strange skewed opinions about things that no one even asked them about. It's, it's outrageous. And then they'll turn it into a social crisis. All this nonsense about the patriarchy. Like, it's beyond me. I don't understand where these people are getting this stuff from. It's like they're just making stuff up. They'll turn everything into a problem. Is it just me? Or am I reading too much into this? Should I be concerned? Or like, I, this is the experience that I want. When I go and see this movie, especially in the theaters, what I see in the trailer is what I want throughout the entire movie. I feel like it would be a hilarious, funny, goofy ride. We're poking fun at the doll world, the dollyverse as we know it. Um, we're poking fun at these kooky characters that have been in existence since the 60s, y'all. These are old characters, established characters. And you won't come out now and like switch everything up. I don't, I don't understand that. Like to me, that's very concerning. You feel me? I hope that these concerns I have is just paranoia because of the track record we have with media right now. The way they're depicting women in the media to me is very unrealistic. To me, it's unrealistic the way they're depicting the average woman in the media. The average woman in the media to me is like, what is the standard you guys are trying to push on us? You want me to go beat a bunch of guys up? You want me to protect myself? I don't want to do that. <laughs> I don't want to do that. And also, I shouldn't have to do that. Because as a woman, there are certain things that just come with being a woman that kind of like, I'm not going to say it's your right, but I mean, it's a perk of being a woman. And you're taking that away from me? Why are you doing that? To me, that doesn't feel right. You feel me? I just don't like that. I feel like men have their perks. Yes, let them have it. I, women have our perks too. Don't take away from my perks because you don't want me to enjoy it because I don't know why. I feel like a lot of the women that have this weird rhetoric, their personalities in general is very defiant. They're very rebellious. They have some kind of like a deep-seated hatred towards just men in general because somebody in their life didn't treat them right or they witnessed someone being abusive to someone in their life and they're carrying that hurt and, and trauma with them everywhere they go so they just like spew it onto the rest of the society and it's so dangerous to do that because that's literally how bigots are born that's how racists are born that's how sexism is born just because it's a woman doing it to a man doesn't mean that it's not as damaging you feel me it's just strange so as a mother of a son and a daughter I don't like where media is going right now. It's very concerning to me. I feel like the beauty of the Barbie brand is being stripped away from us if indeed this movie is depicting Barbie's character in this skewed way because Barbie definitely is an icon, but she's an icon to most women because she represents that you can be a feminine being, you can enjoy having a love, you can enjoy having friends, you can enjoy having a social life, you can enjoy being beautiful, and you can still get things done. You can still live in your mansion, you can still get a great job, you can still be educated, you can still be stylish, you can still be fun, you can still be a great mom, you can still do all of the normal things that people associate with feminine beings while also going beyond that to achieve even more you don't have to restrict yourself just because you're a woman if you want to go be a construction worker I don't know why you would want to do that but if you want to do that it's open to you you can go and do that you want to be a doctor go do that girl if you want to be a ballet dancer go do that girl I don't want my daughter to feel like I don't want to be a gymnast or a ballet dancer because that's for girls and I'm gonna prove to everyone I can be a superhero so I'm gonna go join the army like I don't want her to feel like she has to do that why are you doing that I had a conversation with a friend of mine who's a few years older than I am it was really sad listening to her talk about her experience as a single woman trying to keep herself afloat in this high economy world that we're living in and how difficult it is for her without a partner helping her she has to work so hard and she's tired she's exhausted when she gets home she comes home to her cat and she's like lonely and sad and like she makes so much money but it doesn't mean anything to her because she has no fulfillment when she comes home and when I ask her about like her dating life it's very sad listening to her talk about her dating life because she literally said to me and I'm sure a lot of women feel like this I was raised to be self-reliant because supposedly if I rely on a man that puts me at some kind of disadvantage in life so I've been working hard and working hard and working hard my whole entire life and when I'm dating, I feel like I get jealous of the men that I run into because at my age, most of the men I run into either have their own businesses or they are 
retired already and they have so much time on their hands and so much money that they can just spend to go and have fun and experience things meanwhile i gotta work 40 plus hours every week so when i have a new boyfriend he's like hey let's go camping for a week i want to go but i don't have it like that to just go take a week off from work and i get so jealous that this guy is able to do that and it pisses me off and then i don't want to see him again that's really sad that she's like going through something like that because she's trying to live up to society's box that they're putting women in where you have to be the strong independent person who never needs any help and she was like girl it's exhausting and when i look at women like you i think you guys are really lucky and she was telling me how like she has a friend who hasn't worked in 20 years because basically she got married and her husband who makes good money has been taking care of her all this time so she's just running around having a good old time and living the life she's jealous of her because she's like why does she get to do that because this woman can't put her pride to the side for five minutes to enjoy the perks of being a woman which is yeah men want to take care of you did you not know that girls <laughs> Guys who like you actually want to take care of you. They don't look at you like you're a burden. They look at you like, no, I need her in my life. It's like, am I not going to pay for the gas that I need to put into my car? I need my car. Of course I'm going to pay for the gas. How else am I going to have a car? That's how men look at women. Yeah, I have to maintain her and keep her comfortable. Why would she be with me if she was uncomfortable? Of course I'm going to pay. Of course I'm going to take care of her. Of course she doesn't have to worry about working and contributing, right? That's how it's been for centuries and plenty of men still have that traditional value of women even though the media depicts them as if they're just concerned about our body parts and they have no other interest in us other than that totally ridiculous that's not true the average american man does not feel like that okay go outside your house and go talk to some men they don't feel like that it's nonsense and these people are have been lying to us and this is what i told my friend because like all my friends ask me for relationship advice when i ask them why you keep asking me for advice they always say it's because you're the only woman i know in modern day times who has been married as long as you have been with the same guy and you guys don't have problems so you must be doing something right i gotta ask you for your opinions on these matters you feel me but sadly my female friends they never take my advice they hear what i say and they're like that makes a lot of sense but then their emotions get in the way and they never listen the guys on the other hand they always listen whatever i say they come back over and over and over and trying to get more out of me because it works when they apply what i'm saying i have at least three friends who have gotten married within like a six month span of time while getting information from me directly to help them to navigate their dating lives and they found good wives you feel me so shout out to those guys but like you know there's a difference there is a difference between a man and a woman if there was no difference then you would never see trans people change things about themselves so that they can experience what it's like to walk in the shoes of the other gender they would not need to do that you would just if you were a man trying to be a woman you just walk around with your beard walk around with your hair cut short walk around in your baggy pants and call it a day and just expect people to treat you like a woman because you're a woman right that's not how it is though you see what i'm saying guys that's not how it is the first thing they do is change the way that they look and sound for a reason all right this is where i'm coming from about my concerns on this movie i know you guys didn't think i was gonna go this deep i understand i'm a critical thinker so i don't even know any other way to look at this situation this is the kind of thing that like i would be skeptical to go and show to my children because as excited as i am as a barbie enthusiast based on the trailer to share that experience with my daughter i don't want her to to be fed this rhetoric that her brother and her father are useless because they're men because that's what you're telling me if all of the men are goofballs and idiots and they're all trying to enslave the women and they're all trying to run the show if that was really true as, as the media is trying to make us believe that it is then that should be true for my father it should be true for my brother it should be true for my cousins it should be true for my uncles every single man that i know i should be weary of because he's trying to enslave me in some way right he's trying to exert his patriarchy over me the reality of it is that a lot of us women have been lied to and we have been they skewed the, the the truth so that it looks like it's a bad thing it's not that the patriarchy is coming down on us women and putting limits on us it's that men recognize that we women are not built like them they're trying to protect a lot of the women from real life from the real world how scary and dangerous it can be there are predatorial men out there and women who will come after you they don't care what gender you are but a female is a lot more vulnerable than a man so their first target is usually going to be a woman or a child you see what i'm saying obviously because we're different from each other so when you're a woman walking down the street by yourself at night you are more of a target to a bad person whatever gender that person is 
Don't get it twisted, y'all. You think women don't be committing crimes against each other? Yes, they do. There's plenty, plenty of stories out there of women who either perpetrated or worked with some man to go swipe people off the streets and lure them into their car so they can tie them up in their dungeon basements and do whatever they feel like doing to them. So many stories like that, you guys. If you don't believe me, just Google it. Just Google it on YouTube, true crime stories, and then put in female or woman or something like that, and you'll see countless stories of women completely manipulating situations and doing all kinds of extreme things to other people with no regard to the consequences and how it's affecting the person and they don't care if you're a man or a woman you're a fair game if you are someone who they deem as a target so we need to get away from this weird like thought process that men are beneath us men are trying to harm us men are bad are some men those things absolutely but they are not the majority of men they are not the average man most men aren't like that <laughs> you know what i'm saying and uh, and this is the crazy thing too a lot of the women who talk like this they've never even had an experience with a man that was actually putting them in danger they go off of what other people are saying and they just ride the train the follow train because they don't have a thought of their own they watch too much tv they're online all day long and they're being fed these weird storylines and they just go along with the narrative like a bunch of drones because they don't want to think for themselves Honestly, ask yourself, average woman, what man was bothering you? What, the weird guy on a, on a street corner somewhere where you were walking by at night? He's bothering everybody. You feel me? He's bothering men too. Nobody likes that guy. Were there not women that were being manipulative towards you? Think. If I think back on my life, I can probably think how many more females have sabotaged me or tried to sabotage me than a man. Men, for the most part, have tried to help me, come to my aid, be there for me give me solutions, are compassionate towards me. Most men, that's the experience that I've had with them. Whereas with females, I'm not saying most women are like this, but a lot more women than men have treated me like something was wrong with me, like they couldn't trust me, like they were trying to take something from me, they were lying to me, sabotaging me, especially in corporate world, trying to make me feel bad about myself, judging me, calling me a bunch of names. This is mostly women that have done this to me, fighting with me, mostly women that have done this to me. Do I hate all women because most of the people who have done me dirty in life are women? Absolutely not. I still love my sisters, the ones that treat me with respect. You feel me? Like a lot of my viewers here on Broken Dolly TV are, are women. I don't have no problem with them because you guys are women with respect. You guys are women that have sense. You guys are women that actually value yourselves and therefore you can see that you value other people, right? Y'all know how to act. You got sense and that's what I'm trying to say. Most people have sense. Most people are not these weirdos who want to be narcissists and like ruin everybody's life around them and enslave them. That's not most people. So I understand the precautionary tale that we need to tell our children to be careful of people who are like that. Absolutely, I agree. You should. You should be smart. You should not be trusting of everyone. You should do your homework, learn a little bit of psychology, learn how to deal with people and look for the red flags when you have relationships building with people, whether it's a deep relationship like a spouse or a boyfriend or girlfriend or a more superficial relationship like just co-workers at your job or people passing through the halls at school but you need to have this kind of like um, education on how to read people in order to navigate those situations much better but just uh, in general overall we should not be pushing this narrative on our young women that it's okay to be derogatory mean aggressive and angry at men in general just because they're guys we should not be depicting young men like they're all stupid like they don't have any sense like they don't know what they're doing like they cannot contribute anything positive to your life or like they are somehow dangerous because they were born with a penis that's not fair that's not fair it's very wrong it's immoral and i don't support that so in light of it being just all in good fun i do want to check out the movie and hopefully most of the stuff in the movie is fun and like happy-go-lucky enough for me to be distracted by that part to not pay so much attention to the feminist rhetoric that is trying to throw at us but I don't know because I'm such a deep thinker I don't know if I can even do that so that's why I'm on the fence about whether I want to spend my husband's hard-earned money to go watch it in the theaters and have the whole theater experience even though I would love to based on the trailer that I'm seeing but then there's another part of me that's like I don't want to be disappointed I don't want to be regretting it Maybe I should just wait until it's on streaming and then not bother my whole family to make it an experience and just watch it on my own when I'm bored and I just want to check out the movie because I definitely am going to watch it just to quell my own curiosity and prove myself wrong because I want to be so wrong, you guys. 
I really do. I'm so impressed at the the artistry of how the movie was put together and just the actors. I want to see these actors because they're great actors. And I'm not necessarily their fans specifically, but I know these are good actors that they have in the movie. So I don't want to miss that experience of like getting to see how these guys portrayed these characters. On a positive note, I was impressed to hear from the critics, even the people that had negative things to say about the movie. They did all seem to agree that the cast was on point, that all of the characters were being um, acted in a very believable way, and that... It was a pleasure to see those specific actors cast in every part on screen because they did such a great job of delivering their roles. But just the storyline itself was what most of those people were concerned with. I really hope I'm wrong. I want to hear you guys' take on this. What do you guys think? Do you think I'm being paranoid? Do you think that my opinion is just trash? Are you like, what are you talking about, Gypsy? Nobody is out here pushing the rhetoric that men are no good, they're all useless, and we women are better than them, we don't need no man. Nobody's doing that. What are you talking about? Where did you hear this from? Maybe maybe I'm going crazy. Maybe, maybe I'm misunderstanding things. But that's the message that I've been getting from consuming content and social media, like especially on like, you know, that, 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 right? The click clock website i can't say the name of it on here because youtube likes to demonetize people for no apparent reason whenever they say the t-word but y'all know what i'm talking about on that website there's so much hysteria over there like men against women women angry at men is so ridiculous y'all and what the hell like that's that's a website that's geared towards the youth that's a website that's geared towards teenagers and young adults that's so concerning that that's just the norm in our society right now amongst the youth now i don't want anybody to get confused if you've listened to me talk this long on my take like i said in the beginning of this video if you skipped past that part i gave you the rundown of my personal biases and where i'm coming from as a 38 year old american born half korean and black woman who was born a woman, identifies as a woman, and proud to be a woman, who's a mom of a boy and a girl child, who experienced single motherhood, which was not fun. I don't care how many of these girls come on here and try to give themselves credit for being mommy and daddy on Father's Day. Bro, it's not fun. It, that's a hardship. Being a single mom is a true hardship, especially with more than one kid. Thankfully, I didn't have to go through that with more than one child, and I pray I never have to, but that's where I'm coming from. And yes, I do follow a religion, but I'm not religious. In my religion, feminism is held in high regard. In my religion, women are very very treasured and put on not a pedestal but on equal kill with men however we make a distinction within my religion that a man is a man and a woman is a woman there are roles that each one is just designed to play by nature and that's why we move the way we move and we compliment one another and if you compliment the man and the man compliments you then your life will run smoothly and peacefully why are the women oppressed they are not but if you understand something and let me spend a moment since we opened that can. Let's try and inshallah serve it. In Islam, a man is supposed to be looking after the women whom he is the guardian of. The closest male relative is supposed to be providing the basics for the females whom he is the closest to in terms of the Sharia. It's either a husband or an adult son or a father or a brother if those are non-existent, meaning stage by stage depending if one is not there then it goes to the other if one has run away from his duty it goes to the other it doesn't mean you leave her on the street and so on so a woman in actual fact does not really need money for anything that is necessity if she has money it's token for her own i would term luxury it means it's just hers she doesn't actually have to look after someone with that wealth she doesn't actually have to have she's got no duties besides zakat to be paid with that wealth but a man if he has wealth he's got duties obligations obligations for what obligations upon those whom he is the guardian of his children his wife maybe his mother if he is the son and so on and if the father is not around and what have you so there are so many obligations a woman a long time ago used to be inherited herself you know when a man owed another man money and if he died they would say okay just give me his daughter and forget about the money just give me his wife the widow and forget about the money what dignity did Islam bring to those women? That is prohibited. It is wrong. So much so that even the marriages where someone says, I take 
I will marry your sister and you will marry my sister and we will cut out the dowry and so on. That's wrong, completely unacceptable. You can't do that. So Islam honored the woman by saying, you know what? You are not a commodity. Today, if you take a look at women, they have been reduced to a tool of business. They want to advertise, for example, uh, electric cables, electric cables. And they'll have a naked woman next to it. Doing what? If you touch those type of cables, you'll be burnt. Allahu Akbar. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. To advertise anything, they have a woman. Why? Because she doesn't realize we've been reduced to a little tool of attraction. And this is why the women of the West, sometimes when they realize what's going on and they say, you know, I've been brought up just to impress and attract the opposite sex. And I've been made to understand that that's what life is all about. When they see the beauty of Islam, they realize the value for themselves. Their link with Allah. It's not all about impressing, impressing the opposite sex. But sadly, because of so much of technology that has been misused by us, sometimes even our own daughters and our own women happen to be falling in that, let alone the men. So now, and I'm going to give you an example. A man dies. He leaves behind one son and one daughter and he leaves behind 75 let's make it interesting 75 million Qatari riyals. so the son gets 50 million and the daughter gets 25 million and this the, this daughter is the closest relative to the daughter male relative is that son my brother because she's not married she, her father's just passed away she doesn't have any other brothers this is the brother Islam says listen sister that 25 million is yours you can do what you want with it and this guy he has to look after his wife and children with it and he has to and on top of that, all your basic requirements, he must provide for you. Allahu Akbar. Who has more money? Divide it. This guy has to divide his 50 million in five people. 10 million each. And that one, 25 million, I'm still sitting with it. And it's mine. Take a look at who got more. But people don't look as deep as that. Meaning there's not, no flaw in the Quran at all. But because we are the ones who are not practicing upon the teachings of Islam. And we don't even want to know them. So you are supposed to be looking after them. But once you start trying to overtake your role and be the other person's role, that's when things get all crazy and you're going to have problems in life. And at 38 years old, I'm seeing how true that that is. When I look outside my window, when I look online, I'm seeing that everywhere. So that puts me further in, into my faith because I know I'm seeing it everywhere. It's true. <laughs> It's exactly true. As soon as these men and women get confused about what their roles are, everything is going out the window. I'm making that disclaimer to say, at the same time, I'm also, just individually as a person, I still believe that everyone has the right to choose their own path in life. You follow the religion that you feel comfortable following, that you think is the right way. As long as you're not harming other people, I don't have a problem with it. Me personally, you know, I have friends that are all different kinds of religions. Some of them are straight up atheists, but... I don't judge them based on that. I ju judge them by their personalities, you know? So I don't care what, what religion you are. Also, I don't care what race you are. There's so many people out here who claim that they're anti-racism, but within their own race, they like to judge other people who, who are mixed like me. I'm black and Korean. I identify with both of my races and I have every right to do that. If, if identity is held in such high regard, leave me alone to identify with my mixed race. But sometimes, Depending on where I'm hanging out online, you guys, when I talk about my mixed race, I get attacked by black women who don't view me as a black person because my mom isn't black, which I don't understand because clearly you didn't go to school to biology class if that's really what you believe. It's totally asinine. Even though I didn't ask their opinions, they will attack me and start screaming and yelling and calling me a bunch of names because they're angry at the fact that I'm half black. And it's bizarre because I'm like... If you don't want people to be racist against you as a black person, then why are you being racist against someone else because they're either not black enough or because they're mixed with some race that you decide, decided you're going to disrespect today? That's very bizarre to me because most so-called full black people are mixed. They're mixed with some kind of Native American, white blood, and even Hispanic blood. And sometimes they don't even know that they're mixed. So... Why does it matter what I'm mixed with? You see what I'm saying? If I identify as a black person, if I identify as an Asian person, that's my right to do it. Or isn't it? <laughs> Make up your mind. Do we care about identities or do we not? <laughs> right? Do we have the right to identify ourselves as what we please or do we not? Make up your mind about it. I have to respect your gender pronouns, but you can't respect my racial pronouns? That's very bizarre to me. I don't understand how that makes any sense. It's completely 
craziness you feel me so tell me if i'm going crazy y'all i'm gonna consider what you say because you guys' opinions i hold a lot higher in esteem than the rest of the internet that i come across on a daily basis and that's because i know how the doll community is we're a very inclusive group we are a very diverse group and i feel like the doll community represents exactly what we're talking about in these um conversations online like perfectly we're so diverse as a group of people who, who are brought together by dolls some of us are children some of us are adults some of us are elders some of us are parents some are men some are women some are straight some are gay some are trans some are everything under the sun people like me some of us are polyamorous and all different kinds of religions no religion artistic people doctors lawyers like educated not educated autistic neurodiverse so many different groups and demographics of humans that are in this doll community and we still can somehow get along with each other respect one another's differences and opinions and appreciate each other's differences rather than attacking one another because we are so different am i bugging that's the experience i've been having for all these years that i've been a part of the doll community and i've been a part of this community for almost as long as my daughter has been alive and she's 11 years old right now y'all it can't just be me like i can't just be me i know at least one or two of you guys out there get what i'm where i'm coming from right yeah so i encourage you guys to go and watch this movie i'm not saying don't watch it because of my own personal beliefs on the movie no way that's not at all what i'm saying do whatever you want i tell my kids the same thing i don't censor what media my children watch because i want them to be able to make their own decisions about things i just let them know certain things that go against reality you should not be believing it because you saw it on tv for example these children with their weird challenges that they like to do that turn out to be very dangerous or illegal or just stupid and they get themselves hurt killed maimed or legally in trouble bro that's not real you don't go out and do that because you see other people on tv doing that so like i try to teach my children the difference between real fantasy logical stupid like that's what i'm concerned with but as far as being exposed to the media itself no i'm not censoring it go ahead and watch it just watch it for fun just know that it's just entertainment it's not something i need to be like shaping my whole entire life around yeah so i didn't mean to make this video so long but i really wanted to have this discussion with you guys because i think this is a very important discussion because this movie is representing us to a degree as barbie enthusiasts and lovers this movie has made it almost less shameful i guess less of a taboo to openly say i'm an adult who collects barbie dolls you know but i don't want to be associated with this weird rhetoric that i hate men because i like barbies bro how excited do we get in this community when we get masculine looking male dolls when we get more male face sculpts when we get cool clothes for the boys how many of us complain all the time that all the clothes look fruity delicious and yeah i get it ken is a little eclectic and he would wear that stuff but all the boys in the world are dressing like this come on these pants are extra extra tight like seriously not all of my ken dolls want to wear leggings when they go out to play basketball with their homeboys you understand what i'm saying i'm trying to simulate real life <laughs> right so <laughs> so it's not just me i mean this is a, a usual even even gay men in the community i've heard so many times saying i want the boys to look more masculine i have to like change my guys to make them look more masculine because they don't come that way you know so we already know barbie brand is very pro lgbtq plus very pro gender identity um accommodation very pro depicting different kinds of genders and age groups and all the whatever demographics people belong to race all of that stuff at some point in history they weren't yeah but we know that they have evolved over the years the community is very open to all these different demographics of people so ain't nothing wrong with saying yeah heterosexual people should be able to represent <laughs> masculine men should be able to represent and be proud of their masculinity and walk in it not be ashamed and apologize to everyone because they want to be manly leave them alone right that's just how i feel about it but anyway that's my rant on the barbie movie itself but the next part i'm going to get into is the housekeeping like i was saying earlier with you at the beginning of the video the footage that you guys are seeing of my characters raymond so on a lot of the characters that i chose to make into sims 4 characters are coming from the broken barbie show that we used to have on this channel and i've been telling you guys because y'all keep asking me like when are you gonna bring the show back can you make more episodes and y'all that show was my like baby okay it was like my love 
brainchild um, work in progress that both me and my husband Adonis who are performing artists were so passionate about doing and we had so many great ideas that we wanted to bring to fruition but because our lives took us on this journey literally state to state to state and we've just been like moving around and setting up and having to start all over again multiple times the space that I have been working with in the last few years that I've been living here in Washington state isn't working for me as far as trying to set up a stage craft do all that. I haven't been able to do any of that stuff I'm lucky if I even have space to like display the dolls I want to display so I got to work with what I have so I got the clever idea to bring my dolls into a virtual setting where I can create the sets that I want where I can make them look the way that I want like I have dolls that I can't I can't customize to my liking because I don't have time to repaint their faces reroute their hair change up all the stuff on them that I want to do like I don't have time to do it right I don't have space for the supplies to do that stuff but I'm so passionate in my mind I've got all these plans and ideas and stories so I'm like you know what I'm gonna I'm gonna just get creative and do it a different way so I decided to create these characters in my game so that I can bring them over to a save file that I'm working on called the broken dolly verse and uh, create the atmosphere that I'm going for all the characters that I would have had in the show that were already in the show or that I would have brought into the show like uh, Reagan and Sierra those were pretty popular characters that were my mixed race twins that had an identity crisis issue and they like hated each other um, I've got those characters in it I've got <laughs> doll channel guru and their mom in it I've got Freyman's whole one um, men and the whole writers room crew in another storyline that I have going on so I'm just like working on all these different storylines and ideas so we can bring these stories to you guys to entertain us in a different way and when that project is is ready to be published y'all will be the first to know about it so that's part of what I'm working on behind the scenes and that's also part of the reason why you guys don't see me so regularly online like chatting and talking to everybody because I don't want to get distracted because y'all know my first love is dolls if I go down the rabbit hole of checking for y'all on Instagram like it's not going to end I'm never I'm never putting my phone down <laughs> I'm gonna be online all day like okay wait a minute this new Barbie's coming out oh man she fly oh snap where mommy did this to her doll oh my god she's so cute I need one of those oh snap oh Alfonso did what with his doll oh he rerouted this one oh man where he get that doll from I need to ask him like I'm just gonna go on and on and on in my rabbit hole and get nothing accomplished so I have to deprive myself of my drug which is the dolly verse and feed myself virtually instead I'm getting my fix of dolls by doing it through my sims game because it's just I, I'm attached to the characters so much more when I think of them as like my actual Barbie dolls walking around in this world <laughs> It's so dope. <laughs> so if you're into that, if you want to see those stories come to life, then just keep following me. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any notifications from me. I might be posting on the community tab. And I do try to stay active on at least the community tab in between videos, guys. You can come and talk to me in the comment section over there, too. Just get ready for some fun because we're about to go back to having a good old time because that's really where my heart is at, y'all. I'm not really into all the reviews and like, you know, all of that stuff, tutorials. That's not really me. I just ended up going down that hole because people were just always coming to me and like wanting to see my reviews because I just be keeping it real on the reviews, right? But, and I understand it because that's how I wished that the rest of the doll community was making their reviews on YouTube. So that's what I was trying to bring to the table. I accomplished it, but at the same time, my heart was in the production part of it, was in like the performing arts part of it, the storylines, the acting, the setting up sets and the characters. Like my dolls are my puppets, you know what I'm saying? So I'm trying to tell stories and that's what I mostly collect for is to create characters and storylines, but I can't even really enjoy them like that because of the situation I'm in with my um the, the way our housing is you know so that's just my little compromise I hope you enjoyed this video I know it's really long but I don't know when I'm gonna get to talk to you guys again next in video format so I just want to make sure I say like everything I wanted to say thanks for watching this far in because you people that are here right now listening to me say this sense y'all are the core audience yo you guys are my tried and true people who's like been down with me from day one and I always appreciate you guys being here with me every step of the way some of y'all man i'd be looking at you guys as comments and i'd be like dang this person been watching me for seven years dang that's family that's straight up family <laughs> seven years nine years stop playing with me four years 
man you family that's how i'll be looking at it i know it doesn't always convey because i'm so bad about answering you guys in the comments right away that's really truly how i feel and i see every single one of the comments you guys all of them so thank you so much for sticking with me help me to grow this channel more i know i'm not on here as frequently as i used to be but i just got a lot of things going on in my life i like that we're building a community over here of a safe space for people who love dolls to come over and just express their opinions and talk about the joy and their love of dolls and what dolling represents to us you know yeah so we're family you guys so thanks for um watching i'll see you guys in the next one give me some suggestions in the comments of which characters from broken barbie show that y'all want to see revived in my sims 4 game we'll work on it together i'll talk to you guys later my name's gypsy make sure you subscribe you're watching broken dolly tv today and i hope after this you go to have a dolly day mm -hmm.